Welcome to Password Cracking 101 Plus One. Over the next several weeks, uh, maybe even a couple of months, we're going to be releasing this training free um, as several videos where we're going to take you through a number of different uh, password attacks and techniques ranging from the traditional and more basic all the way through to some very advanced and unorthodox types of attack. So, without further ado, let's get started. I'm Will. I co-founded InDot Security in 2018. I've been in information security though for several years prior. Um, I've been a pen tester uh, since 2014 and prior to that I spent six years as a digital forensic investigator. So I've seen several sides of cyber security. Um, I'm lucky enough to have trained um, at various places and spoken some of those also. Um, and if you want to find me online, Twitter, anywhere, Discord, I'm generally stealthploit anywhere you look. In dot security, like I said, it's been around since 2018. Um, our main offering is penetration testing. That's where we sort of specialise, but we do offer a suite of technical cyber security services. Uh, and we also have a suite of training courses, as shown on the right there. Um, our main commercial offerings being hacking enterprises and defending enterprises. Um, passwords, of course, which you're all here for now. And we also periodically run free cyber awareness training also. So our training environment. On our site you would have seen a link to download an OVA file which um, has been tested and designed for VirtualBox however you may find you know you can use this with your hypervisor of choice and this is going to be the uh, the training platform that we use throughout this training throughout this video and all subsequent uh, segments of this training course that we release. Um, it's a quite a minimal Kali install with uh, default credentials of Kali Kali and this install has been pre-populated with all of the questions and answers uh, that we will be going through in this training. So whilst the videos of course are here for your reference to actually get your, your hands dirty you can download uh, this OVA file and follow along. Okay, just be warned though, um, the spoilers, i.e. the answers, are in a hidden folder called dot .answers in Kali. So if you want to avoid temptation please uh, don't look at that until you're absolutely stuck. <laughs> What are we going to be covering? So you can see this is from our uh, slide deck. It says over the next four hours. Um, now that I don't have the uh, the constraint of time, uh, cumulatively the videos might go on for a little longer than that. However, we've traditionally run this as a four-hour, quite intensive training. So the recap section, um, which forms the probably the smaller part of this of this course, um, is the kind of the traditional stuff. Um, the things that anyone who's done any degree of password cracking will probably be familiar with. We're going to have a look at a couple of different attack tool sets, although predominantly we will be focusing on Hashcat during this uh, during this training. We're going to have um, a kind of a token slide on online password attacks and a very quick kind of exercise on that just to cover it off. Um, but this training course does not really focus online attacks at all. Um, it really is predominantly looking at attacking password hashes in offline attacks. We're going to cover the traditional things that many of us will already be doing, like dictionary and rule attacks. Uh, we're going to do some brute forcing some mask and hybrid attacks and then we're going to look at working with files and extracting hashes from files that we might encounter. Then we get on to the really fun stuff. So this is the 101 plus 1 section. As you can see here we're going to look at a number of different things from uh, wordless generation to introducing tools that some of which don't come shipped with Hashcat by default to really extend our attack methodologies uh, to do things and to try and generate candidates that traditional dictionaries and rules um, really can't really do for us. So um, when you've uh, dumped out the directory or you know when you've got those last few elusive hashes that uh, all of your dictionaries and rules are, are sort of um, failing against, these are the kind of things we can look at next. I'm not going to step through all of these now, but as you can see, we get into some quite interesting things with passphrase attacks, non-ASCII, we're going to look at emojis, uh, some crypto wallet examples, um, and more. So hopefully you'll find this really interesting. So, let's start on the recap section. For anyone who's not really done any type of password cracking at all, let's just introduce what a hash is and get this out of the way. So a cryptographic hash value, this is a, a one-way process first, first and foremost. 
What by, by that we mean we can't take a hash value, an example of which shown at the bottom, and then kind of mathematically reverse that to get our clear text data. It's one way. That's why hashing is generally used in, in, in password storage and not something like encryption um, in a raw form because encryption can be decrypted. Uh, and that would be quite a, a flaw in the process. So by applying a one-way hash, a one-way cryptographic hash, we can take some arbitrary clear text for example, the password shown on the bottom left there, and generate a cryptographic hash value. Now, these hashes have a variable length input that, produced a that produces a fixed length output. Now, this is per algorithm. So, for example, the hashes that your Windows laptops might uh, generate for you for your logon passwords will differ greatly in terms of how they look to the hashes of, let's say, um, someone who's a Mac user or someone who's a Linux user. Uh, in turn, applications can use varying different hashing algorithms to store our passwords. So hashes won't always look like the example shown at the bottom. However, if we're talking about the same system, for example, um, every uh, Mac user will produce a, a hash value. This is a very fixed length for that type of system and architecture. In this example, this is uh, an MD5, or it might even be an NTLM, I'm not even sure. <laughs> uh, it's been a while since I've generated these, um, but they will be fixed length. So what we mean by that is we can take this variable length input and produce a fixed length output. If we hash the letter A, or if we hash completely random password, we will get this 32 character fixed length output regardless of how many characters we hash on the input. It's also deterministic, so the same input will always produce the same output. If we take the letter A and hash it, we will get this, again, assuming this is either MD5 or, or NTLM. Similarly, we could take completely random password and it will always result in this hash value for the given algorithm we are using. Now, what that means is, if we hash this, we will get this string here. If we then take this string of letters and hash it again, we will get the same input. So it'll never it'll never vary at all. Just to show you how much the output will vary on very subtle changes, we have this example at the bottom here. So in this case, we've taken a, this lowercase l and made it an uppercase i, and you can see that the resulting hash value differs greatly. So that's not a subtle change, it's a completely different change. How do we go about attacking these hashes? Okay, so we have a number of tools at our disposal. We are going to be focusing on offline password attacks throughout this training, and we are going to be really looking at Hashcat more than anything. Online attacks, though, there are tools out there that can assist us with this, and a couple of common ones that come shipped with Kali are Hydra and Medusa. We will have a look at Hydra in a second. There are also commercial offerings, including some of which are shown below. However, there are many out there uh, available to us, and they all you know, have their own uh, advantages and disadvantages. There's not one tool for everything. If there was, then we wouldn't have all these, uh, have all these competitors. So we're going to be looking at Hashcat predominantly. Let's have a look at online cracking. So like I said, we're just going to have a quick token slide on this, an example uh, to show you how we do it. And then we're going to really focus uh, for the re remainder of these videos and the trainings on offline password cracking. Hydra is our first example. So Hydra is a very versatile tool that can attack a number of different um, protocols, number of different services, depending on what we might be looking to attack. We have an example use, um, an example syntax shown here. I'm not going to step through all the syntax for everything on here because we're going to be focusing on offline uh, attacks more. However, we can feed Hydra um, a list of usernames with a capital L or a single username with a lower L. Similarly, we could test a static password with a lowercase dash p, or we can give an upper p and then a, um, a path to a word list. Following that, we need to give it our protocol followed by the IP address of where we're attacking. So this could be SSH, it could be MySQL, it could be a number of different things. Like I said, Hydra supports a number of different services and protocols. In this example then, we can see that we're taking the usernames found in users.txt, attacking them with word lists in this top100.txt, and we're attacking SSH at this IP address shown here. Optionally, you could tell Hydra there is a non-default port by giving it the DAS dash S switch. Um, and in this, we're also using the um, example word list shown here. On the Kali images that you've downloaded on your Kali builds, there will be pre-populated pre in there 
all of the um, dictionaries and tools required for everything in this training course. So you should not require anything other than what's on your Kali host. And we're going to have a look at that in a second. Right, let's just do that. So before we jump into this first exercise of online cracking, I'm just going to bring up VirtualBox. Now hopefully you've all downloaded uh, this password cracking 101.ova, which I've just got saved on my desktop here. Now, by double clicking that, this has been tested with the VirtualBox, as I said. Double clicking this OVA will import it into your VirtualBox environment. You can accept the defaults. It does, uh, by default, assign a NAT networking adapter. Mine is bridged. You can do it however you want. And when you've powered this up, you will see that you do have a Kali operating system here. Kali Kali is the username and password, as stated. And when you log in, you'll just have a very generic desktop. Now, in my case, I'm not going to use the VirtualBox desktop because I tend to avoid desktops wherever possible, and it'll be a lot cleaner to see this on, a, on a, just a, a raw command line anyway. But in my case, I have the IP address here of 192.168.169. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to SSH to it. And there we go. I'm now root on my Kali host and we can see we're on the same system. So I'm going to minimize that for now and we're going to focus on the command line here. So let's just jump back to our slides. There's a MySQL database running. What's the password for the MySQL root user? Okay, so um, I'm going to skip a lot of the kind of the enumeration stuff that you do to find where this database is. It is running on a default port for the purposes of this. We're only really looking at how the attack tool is working. So we're going to, oh, wrong window, jump straight into this and have a look. As we mentioned previously, in our Kali folder here, we have Hashcat, which we're going to be uh, working within generally. There's also a hidden folder with our answers. So we've got everything we need right here. Right, I am going to copy and paste this for ease because I dread to think how many typos I will make otherwise. We're going to call Hydra. We've already stated we're going to be targeting the MySQL root user. So we are doing a lowercase l for a single user, targeting root. In this case, we're going to be using the word list as top100.txt and that's going to be something we use at several points throughout this training course because we're not, there's no, there's no value in getting you to sit here and wait for these really big uh, dictionaries to exhaust. The idea is not to sit here and wait hours for passwords to crack. The idea is to learn the, te the, uh, the techniques and the tools we're using. So we're going to keep things simple. Top 100 TXT. We want to target MySQL, so we give Hydra the MySQL um, positional requirement here, followed by, in our case, local host, because we have a MySQL server running on the local host. Obviously, if we were targeting a remote web service, if we were targeting a remote MySQL service, I should say, then that would be the IP address of whatever we were targeting. So we can run that. We can see that MySQL is going to start up here, and we can see it's going to be attacking MySQL on local host on the default port of 3306. Luckily for us, the password wasn't terribly hard, and we can see here it comes up in green, very easy to see, that the login was root, as we already knew, and the password was matrix. So at a high level, that's as kind of simple as it gets for uh, doing some online password cracking. Taking a tool like Hydra, giving it either a single username, as we did, or multiple usernames, giving it a password list, and targeting a service of our choosing. Of course, this needs to be something Hydra supports, but Hydra supports most things that you're likely going to encounter. Okay, so with that, we're going to wrap up this first video, uh, and then next time we're going to move on to the start of our offline password attack section, where we're going to build over several videos into some really cool and interesting attacks. Thanks for joining us, and uh, hope to see you again soon.